Each school took a section of David Arman's poem and they worked with Grace Robinson as a starting point to come up with a big idea, the thing that excited them about their section of the poem. What we wanted to do was help the children comb through this text and find big ideas that are salient in it, but ideas that appeal to them. And each of these sections deals with a different respect in which we might think the North East is great. We were saying about the one page which was about Joseph Swan and what he thought when he invented the light bulb. Because it is local and because they can see how it relates to their life and to the North East and to things that they've seen and haven't realised the connection before. And so that's definitely allowed them to be really engaged with it as well. They are really, really enthusiastic about it and really enjoy taking part. We're not going to be able to ask an expert. We're going to have to answer the questions ourselves by thinking together and talking together. We were the first ones to have a millionth one in one of these competitions and we talked about who's he was and celebration and challenging. I thought of celebration because like when the millionth runner crossed the finish line everybody like was really happy and stuff. We picked imagination to find out more things about when you should use your imagination and when you shouldn't use your imagination. There were some fantastic descriptions of what imagination felt like. I talked about my imagination is running and it can't stop and it feels like pink fluffy clouds or like sticky paper stuck to my head. Imagination is all about make-believe and, and the world beyond the everyday and yet here is an example of imagination in practice, the light bulb that is a very much a part of everyday. And so the children were presented with this problem and that's something they have to work their way through. We got things that are from museums so it's like history and, and then we it's like things that no one ever seen before. Nobody does know where it's going and that's the fascinating and exciting part about inquiry-based learning is that it's all about questioning and then taking that question and that answer one step further and so what it evolves into it just has a life of its own and we're just waiting to see what that's going to be. This is the start of the process and it's just it's great to to meet uh, the young people and to hear what they're interested in at the moment and, it, and it's really important that this piece of theatre comes from their ideas and speaks to them directly. So to keep questioning is a brilliant way to, to go through life. What we hope they'll do next is they'll work with their teacher and teaching assistants who've been trained uh, by Thinking Space with Tiny and Weir Archive and Museums to use philosophical inquiry in the classroom and also in museum and gallery settings. I hope that the pupils are able to take away from today um, new knowledge about the great people of Newcastle and who've helped shape this um, city um, the way that it is now. Thinking about how inventors use their imagination and develop their own ideas and they all take that back into the classroom and use it to develop um, a creative idea of their own. They're really getting into it and getting the idea of the fact that it's not a right answer or a wrong answer which is quite nice as well because so much of what you do is trying to get a certain answer or trying to do things in a certain way. It's not aimed at a certain group of children. The way it's kind of put together it is very accessible which means that it's engaging to the full spectrum of abilities that you've got in the class which is really lovely because it is quite hard to find something that everybody can do in the same way and access it and be engaged with it. And we've got to make sure that we structure what the children come up with in a way that still captures that energy of the whole poem rather than just little, little sections that, that only work on their own. So we then took that starting point and developed some creative writing and made some video and made some sound recordings to explore what imagination meant to them. It is really nice how we get to come to the exhibition and see it and it kind of pulls it together for them that all the work that they've been doing is going into something else and it's getting them outside into different environments and different situations which is always, always lovely for them. It's great that they get to meet David Almond um, and hear his reading of the script. I talked about being an ordinary kid who grew up around here, that I was just like them, and that, um, but that we all have extraordinary things in our own lives. And, you know, the whole notion of this script, the whole notion of the project, is about running. It's about something leading, one thing leads to another. And uh, it's great to see my script leading to other scripts, to other poems, to other stories. And uh, this is what I'm fascinated by. This has been a really exciting week because after 
four weeks of workshops with the schools. We have been touring the show back to the kids so they can see how David Armand's poem, which was the inspiration behind all of the project, uh, has come together with the work, the creative writing and the ideas that they came up with in their workshops and the sound effects and the video that they recorded. There's a real challenge in terms of the piece of theatre that we create to really capture those hundreds of voices and also be really true to their ideas because David's text has already be, been performed in, in a fantastic ceremony as part of the Great North Run so what's going to make this performance really special is the fact that not only do we hear his fantastic words and his really inspiring thoughts but we also hear hundreds of children from across the North East think about those ideas and respond to them themselves. I thought it was really good how they've put like loads of different schools together and um, it's quite funny as well. It had lots of our voices in and it's quite exciting because it's going to be like lots of people are going to be able to watch it. I found it quite funny like the parts where they were running around and stuff. The Ruth had run away and then she passed the water bottle onto the front so he could have a drink because his was empty. It's fantastic to see my work going into schools and for um, children and teachers to be interpreting it and recreating it. So to me that's in many ways that's the purpose of writing. It's not to kind of to display the writing, to display how wonderful the writer is, but to actually share something with, uh, with other people. And it's great to see this, the creativity that's being applied to it. We are touring the show during half term to Tyne and Wear Museum venues. And what's really nice about doing it during half term is hopefully the children will bring some of their families along as well as the general public getting a chance to see some of their work. We've had feedback today, people come up at the end saying um, that they, they thought it was fantastic and that they really enjoyed how we use the, the run and the history. And it's been exciting and, and it's been lovely in the schools watching the children seeing their faces light up when they hear their words or they see an idea that they came up with that we're doing that nobody else might know but it's theirs you know so it's been really lovely really lovely project <laughs>